Hello. So I'm just running a few minutes late. But I'll be right with you guys. Good morning, Lori. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Has, hi, Tricia. Has everyone seen the new hunting line by Authentique? Let me give you a quick peek. I have taken um, a piece out of my die cut, actually two. The new hunting collection, now let me tell you, it is also a limited collection. So it's already, I mean, what, what we have is what we have at your local scrapbook store, um, what we have at Country Craft Creations. So be sure if you're loving the hunting collection, hi Karma, that you pick it up fast because it's, it's selling out. I know what I've got in the store is probably, that's it because it was a short run line and it is a smaller uh, paper collection being that it's hunting, but it's great for fall because I've got to just show you really quick. Some of the pieces, the hunting cut apart. So you have a cut apart sheet. There are five sheets to this, but the back is absolutely gorgeous. You've got greens and browns and I've got a new camera set up and I moved my camera and I keep, um, forgetting before I go live. So I just need to fix one of the settings. But I can kind of still show you as we're going. The um, the only dip between behind this line is for those who um, have asked who have the hunters in their family. But it, they've also added some elegance with it along with the deer head. It almost looks like just a beautiful um, design paper. And we've got camouflage and then we're back to the cut apart because well, hello everybody i created two things that you know when it comes to guys in scrapbooking it's kind of hard <laughs> but once in a while i will have a family member or someone give me an idea which my son did um his his son has a male teacher and they wanted to give him something and i'm kind of like well i'm sure he doesn't want a mini album but we came up with a cell phone holder, which is also, hey, my husband's already last night when I took the picture with his cell phone, he says he wants one for his desk upstairs because it's just a very simplified design. He can sit his phone up and look at it as he's on the computer. We have this weird desk upstairs and so we can't get a suction cup on it. It's just a different uh, finish. And your cell phone will sit and then in the box you can either now the box is just a swing box you can use it he's going to use it for the teacher put candy in there or some paper clips he said some different things those um, clips that the teacher uses on paper so it will be just a nice gift from one of the boys because you know what our male teachers sometimes they don't want these cutie cutesy things right so to create this very simple you just need two sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm using brown. Hi, Anne-Marie and Erica. And the cutting list, I did post it at the beginning of the video, and I've posted it once again. We'll be using lightweight chipboard. You do need lightweight chipboard on your cell phone holder. So we're going to start with the box. And like I said, it's just a little swing box, which is fun. It's also fun to sit and play with at the desk, right? <laughs> So that's what we're going to start with. Let me put that off to the side. So for the hunting box, I pre-cut everything and I've lost it. So let me grab it here. We need a six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. <clears throat> so six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths piece of cardstock. You need a three by 12. You need two three by three that's going to create this whole thing 
and we will be um, matting, but I did a lot of pre-cutting and I, I pre-cut and did the inking so we could get both projects done, but I'll give you the measurements when we get to those point, that point. But let's go ahead and we're going to start and we're just going to uh, score everything first. And we're going to start with the first six and seven eighths by six and seven. Sorry, I have to pick that up. <laughs> there we go. We're going to start with the six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths of an inch piece. And we are going to score this two inches to start with all the way around. And this is a square, so it does not matter where you start. But I'm going to start with this just right here at the top. And I'm going to score at one and a half inch. And you only are going to score to that first score line. One and a half inch to that first score line. This thing sheds. Right hand side, I want to score at five and a half. So again, two inches all the way around, one and a half, five and a half. Now you need to turn to the opposite end, not the sides or anything. So this is where my one and a half and five and a half score lines are. So right above it, again, one and a half, just to the first score line, five and a half. Video will stay recorded so you can always go back and pause and stop where you've messed, missed the measurements. Oh, hi, Maggie. Well, thank you. And it's kind of hard sometimes with the masculine paper as to, you know, what do we do? But our guys get left out a lot. And I'm surprised that even my husband said something. He said that would be really cool on my desk. I am. He likes to take mints to work. He said I could put them in there, stick it in the desk and nobody would bother it. I'm like, OK, we'll get one made for you. OK, now we're going to go to the three by 12 inch piece. I said, I'm kind of getting used to where my new setup is here, and I want to get it so the banner is not in your way. We're going to score at one half inch with the three inch across the top. And let's turn it so the three inch is across the top still. And we're going to score again. Then we just need to score in even measurements at three, six, and nine. Super simple. Three, six, and nine. Yes, that's what my husband said. When he's doing things from home and he needs to look at his phone, it's really great to have uh, something for his phone to sit on. So half, half, three, six, and nine. Three inch pieces, we're not even scoring. So those can be set aside. Now I'm going to just fold this in half, our three inch piece, and burnish. Just really push down with that bone folder. And I'm going to remove the bottom half. These are the same, so it's doesn't matter, but I'm just going to cut straight up the score line to the center. Straight up to your score line. I'm going to turn it over and do the same. So my score line's to the right. It's easier for me to cut. I'm going to fold that in half so I can miter my corners and still keep it at a straight angle. Now let's fold the top score line. While this is folded in half, 
I'm just going to cut right through both pieces of paper and then I'm going to miter these corners. And this is what it's going to look like. Now, on my box, I did mat everything, even though it's not, it, it, the inside of these outside pieces don't show. Matting it, though, just made it that much stronger. You don't have to mat these two on the inside, but I do. So let's go ahead and now fold all the score lines and really crease those with your bone folder by burnishing those, pushing down and creating, oops, creating that really nice crease because you want these to be square. And we'll be doing that a couple of times. But now we want to mat each one of these boxes. Your boxes are three inches long and two inches wide. So let me grab my pieces here. So I have cut No, that was that extra. I was looking at it like that's a really weird piece. I've cut eight pieces right here that are one and seven eighths by two and seven eighths to fit inside of the squares. And for this, I'm going to use the plaid on the inside and the outside. Like I said, these two boxes do become hidden, but if you mat them, they're going to be that much stronger. And you want eight. One and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Okay, we're going to add some new score tape. I mean, score tape. Funny looking score tape, huh? <laughs> Art glitter glue. Sorry. Now, this box really is quick. So you can use Masquerade and get some Halloween ones put together this week. The box would be really fun to make with Masquerade or Magical to add to any Christmas box or Christmas gift, you know, Christmas baskets. Um, gift baskets are becoming there. They've always been there, but I think they're becoming more and more, more and more popular. And to put a little handmade item inside makes them even more special. So if you're going to be doing a Halloween basket or anything for anyone, you can pop one of these in there. You know, even the cell phone holder who can't use one in the kitchen at their desk, on their dresser. The glue will push down. Before it gets too dry, just smooth everything out so it's flat. Yes, for your groomsmen, or if you're asking them to be your groomsmen and you put the note inside the box with the a little gift, cufflinks, or anything. And this paper is great for those groomsmen gifts. Anything that you need a masculine type thing. Okay, let's turn it over and let's go ahead and do the same matting on the back. One and seven eighths. By two and seven eighths. So you need a total of eight.
Good morning, Joan. Whoops, did I not cut eight? Or did I lose one over here? I didn't cut eight. Maybe that's what my extra piece was for. I was supposed to cut another one. I just used a brown to do the inking, but you could use black, green. Even if you have a green that would match, that would look really nice. Man, we have that winter wind or late fall wind starting to blow today. I can hear it and see it we actually had some snow up here in the mountains in utah not good not good <laughs> it's too early okay i want to go ahead and re burnish those edges we want this to be square Three by three. We need to attach these. So turn this over. We need to attach these to the top. One on each side. If you have clothespins, you might want to grab a couple. They will come in handy for this project. The thing is you want to center it to the top, make sure it's all the way there, but not over the score line, just to the score line. And once again on the other side. Hi, Sheila, how are you? And I'm going to go ahead and mat the outside. For the outside, these are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, and you want four. Two for the inside and two for the outside. And don't forget, if you're a hunter or you're a sportsman, he has a hunting dog these would make good doggy treat boxes because there's even pictures of the dogs on the cut aparts and there it is I need fluorescent tools I keep losing mine and you know with authentic the beautiful thing about this collection it's one you can use it it is what I call your day, it's just a true to life paper. Um, you can use it if you've got old pictures of Grandpa and Uncle Joe and, you know, they're going out hunting like they used to. Great for those family history photos. And the colors are going to match with anything, especially those old photos. Okay, I'm going to burnish these one more time. And also my half inch pieces here where we're going to connect the sides. So this is where clothespins are a good help. 
see how that doesn't want to lay down? Well, I'm going to burnish it some more because I want it to be a box, not a not a sloppy box per se. Okay, I'm going to bring this up on the side, and you're going to make sure you're mat you're matching the top. So it's nice and straight. Move that little guy. I'm going to go ahead and use my clothespin once I know everything's straight on the side. There we go. Okay, that's going to hold that in place. Hello, Lynette. Yes, we are lucky that you're here. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to do the same thing here, matching. So everything stays straight. Nothing overlaps anywhere. And I can go in and burnish that one on the bottom. Our glitter glue dries pretty quick. I just want enough so it really catches. And you do want to mat the inside because now you have these half inch um, connectors. And if you don't, your box, when you try to push your box in, it will catch on those. So do mat the inside at two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And those are the second pieces. Even if you have a hunting thing, theme in your house or very woodland, this is going to match your home decor too. Okay, we're going to cover. Those score lines. Hi, Diane. Well, it's sunny and cold here. <laughs> Definitely is cooling down. Not as cold as Wisconsin, though. I do agree. So that's going to sit right on top of those score lines. So our box will move nice and smooth. Hi, Sherry. So that is how now you can kind of see the working mechanism of our box. Now we need to make the box. Now I found I cut, if I cut this before I burnish those score lines, it just, it just seems to work easier. Remember these half inch that we created at one and a half and five and a half. You don't want to cut out the square. You want to cut out the little inside square. So I'm going to go straight up because that's now my tab to hold this together. I like to miter that first, and then I cut straight up. Again, I'm going to go straight up. Now, you don't have to miter that first. You can cut straight across, whatever you like. I do that just so I remember to cut all the way across. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fold this. Because see, my score line is kind of bumpy there, and I want to smooth. There we go. This is kind of one of those boxes you want everything smooth working. Stand up my score lines.
same thing. And then I check. I Sometimes, you know how the score line's bumpy on the back. Just so I have a straight line going, I clean up those edges. And the reason I cut the smaller tabs, I didn't want a heavy, bulky box. So this enabled me to have less you know attached in because we need we want it to not be so heavy and too thick that it doesn't fit in our little opening and what we're going to do is we're going to mat everything while it's flat our sides will come up like so so these sides we cannot mat until after and i'm just going to put it an X. So that reminds me on the inside, do not map the inside of this box. The matting for our box. We need two and three fourths by two and seven eighths, two pieces. This is going to be this top and bottom. Again, the bottom, you're not, well, you do see it when you pull it out. So that's why I do the matting on the top and bottom. And it didn't take much paper, so we're we're good to go. Then we need eight. One and seven eighths. A two and three fourths. So your length is just a hair different. It's two and three fourths by one and seven eighths. You want eight. And we're going to go ahead and do the inside, and then we'll flip it over and do the outside you know it's awful quiet around here <laughs> for it to be this quiet when I have Wilbur in the house. Oh. They must be laying out back. Now again for the bottom. Two and three fourths by two and three fourths. Hope I gave you that right one the first time. It's a hair smaller than your top. Now I'm going to flip this over. Then one thing um, we're going to be doing is we're going to be attaching, if you want a piece of some kind of a ribbon as a pole, you don't need it because you can use your fingers. I just like, I thought it looked kind of cool. So I will be doing this and you'll want to get it cut. Kind of reminder to myself too, so I don't mess up. And I used about a three, a three and a half inch piece. It can be shorter. It can be longer. It's actually going, we'll be attaching it before we put part of the box together. Hello, Bonnie. I don't know if he's sleeping. I see the others outside. I don't see him, which is very odd. You know, Tricia, during our October event here in Utah, and Wilbur was here, he kind of snuck out. No, he didn't sneak out. So, um, when, what I did here is, see, I put it down underneath everything on one of our 
and it doesn't matter which ones on one of our spine pieces here so what's going to happen is it's actually going to go on this inside and um it doesn't matter which side and i'm going to put down ribbon so that i don't forget when i go to hook these together and then i'll mat on top So we're going to mat this whole outside. Hi, Charlene. I'm glad you're here, too. If you don't catch the live videos, you can go back into the Authentic paper here on Facebook Files or here on YouTube. And you can look up any of the Authentic tutorials that I do. And you'll find um, tons of things. Now, if you go back through the Authentic paper, check out especially everything authentic and authentic paper for of course the design team for authentic and country craft creations will post finished projects and so it's always fun to see what they're doing with the paper collections and in the video files you'll find all the tutorials that will give you even more ideas with the upcoming holidays search the older ones i think this is my third year of doing the tutorials so you've got quite a few to go back on Let's just make sure our glue is spread around Now we'll flip this over and before I do any matting, I'm going to add this ribbon. This is just a lightweight gauze. You can use any kind that you like. Now, if your ends are going to fray, and this one is, it's, it's about three and a half. You can have a piece that just sticks out. I doubled it before and I found that that was a little bit thick, but what I'm going to do is kind of off center this so it's more flat because I do like it. So I want to use some score tape. You can still order the art glitter glue. Yes. I'm going to be using the score tape just to hold it down and the art glitter glue will glue everything together here. And this is a good flexible ribbon. Oops. I don't want it too close to the edge. It's just kind of a gauzy. There we go. And that will be my pull. And you know, guys do have big fingers. Of course, so do I. <laughs> I'm going to use um, another piece of score tape on top that's just going to help catch it quick and I'll still use my glue too so I'm going to remove the backing a little bit tricky when you're doing it on ribbon so I try to get yeah a little bit on the paper there we go so we can get it off perfect our glue now this is going to come to the outside, so it'll be a little bit more tricky to, but you've got to get your corners flush here. There we go. Now, I started with the one with ribbon first because it's going to take a little longer to dry. And that's where my clothespin will help. Oh, how lovely to be swinging out on the front porch. <laughs> Yeah, it, one thing I do love about this out in our gazebo, um, it is time to get the fire going in the evening, and it's just so nice. I forgot to do this again. Do that now. That'll be on the inside. I'm not worried I'll get glue in there still.
Let's fold the tab back. I am using our, the art glitter glue and it is fabulous and I'll tell you it is permanent but depending on where you live in the world it's going to start slowing down on shipping it cannot ship in the winter it freezes it does not have a special additive like some other glues do but it when those additives just makes glue runny and I'll tell you when you're using a heavier paper like authentic or artisan cardstock you want a glue that's going to really hold that so now I can add my matting piece to the inside I'm doing the piece with the ribbon last I want it to have extra time on that paper clip Well, it's it's nice, but Joan, it's a little chilly here in Utah today. <laughs> okay, I'm going to glue the paper down and I'll probably put my paper clip back on. That's not a paper clip. That's a clothespin. Sorry. Okay, so let's put the clothespin back on that corner for a minute. I'm going to add just a little bit more adhesive on this corner where it's not exactly. There we go, all the way down. Now, your tab will be to the right. And now you can see how this is going to wrap and it will fold in and that's where your tab we'll use that for our pull and we're good so what i want to do first with my tab here to the right facing out i'm going to add adhesive to this whole side and this is where i mentioned in the beginning even though the matting now is going to be covered it just makes your box that much stronger and I want you to match it right inside of those score lines let your clothespins do the work and then we're going to do the same here and that will extend just a hair past the box Same thing. So now I'll move. I'm just making sure it's even. So we just kind of play musical clothespins. Let's let that dry for just a second, and I want to find my piece to go on top from the die cut and I use that one on the other so I think yeah we'll use the now don't throw these away when you're done see these bear tracks in the back side I use my punches I've punched circles I have punched um, all kinds of different shapes so these are good this is good to use oh there it is <laughs> And because this is for a guy, I just, I'm just going to put that right on top using some foam tape. I'm too lazy to get my foam squares. <laughs> and this was handy.
Now, the front of my box is this corner. I mean, it doesn't really have a front or back. And then there are some little sayings. So if you want to have tree stand tracking on point, bow and arrow. You could even have hunting pal up there. This one I'm just going to put down flat. So again, this could be, this could be the hunting pal, which is usually the dog, right? This could be for the dog treats. Now we'll just close our box. Okay, your box is tight. And the reason it's tight is the matting that I we did top and bottom. So as you play with your box, see, it'll start opening better. So it is going to be a little tight at first. Oh, I like the green plaid. And that's our box. Isn't that cute? Great for the guy. Totally great. You can stick anything you want in there. You know, you could even put love notes and put it in his truck or you could put just candies whatever you want um so our box is done and i'm just going to add my clothes pins to that spot where i did the ribbon it will hold i'm not worried but i want to make super good and sure so we're just going to add a little extra adhesive and we're going to let that sit there we go so we can put those aside and we can grab now the cell phone holder. Super simple. You're going to love making this. Um, again, I'll put the cutting, the measurements back in, but you need just a few sheets of paper. You need an 11 and a half by three and three fourths. Now, if you wanted to make this for an iPad or a tablet, you would make it the same way except you'd make this wider. Well, check your tablet and make sure it will stand, but the cell phone still extends over the top. Basically, you you would just make it wider and you would have you were going to put an extension piece on anyway. And then you could just do that with um, your iPads. So three and three quarters by 11 and one half. Then we have a piece that is four by three and three quarters. Super simple. And in your scoreboard, you're going to score this at one half inch. Now, kind of give you an idea. I want to show you something. Um, what I did, let me come down here. Finish around. I measured the phone because I kind of want to give you an idea here. When measuring your phone, if you need this to be longer, you can do this the exact same way, but you would just put your cell phone down. I knew I just needed a little bit to stick over the top, and that is going to be basically your score line. Okay, mine's at five and a quarter. So you can do some figuring on your own at home too. So our measurement, our scoring is one half, five and a quarter. You can either do 11. I always like to go back here to my um, starting. I because I never know if I have paint, if I have um, cut things, you know, exactly right. Sometimes we are if your cutter's off. So I just turned it around like so. I don't know if it's showing up on your side, guys, but my screen has frozen. Has yours frozen? So let me see if I can get it back up. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's really weird. That's why you're not hearing me talk. Or I mean, you're not seeing me move. Okay. That was really odd. I've never had that happen before. Okay. So we have a four by three and a quarter inch piece. This piece is what's going to become our um, extension piece. So this is the piece also that you could always, you know, adjust if you needed. Okay, we're going to rescore this. I think it's our weather that's acting up. No, nope, we're good. Okay, I'm going to brush this out. It's not five and a quarter. I adjusted mine. It's five and three quarters. Sorry, that's going to be covered. It's five and three quarters and then a half. Impossible. What's impossible? <laughs> Nothing's impossible. So on your four by three and a quarter with the four at the top, you just want to score a half inch. Now we're situated. I know my screen kind of blinked. It's got to be the wind. You know what Sally? Sally has a secret. Hmm. This one is in now don't forget it's the five and three quarters that i need to fold my second one so one needs to come out one needs to go in Now we need to fold this score line and this is going to be that little extension piece. See, I missed all these comments. All of a sudden I got tons of comments. How funny. And um, this little extension piece, we need to attach this to this piece. So all you have to do is turn this over. And don't worry if things are scored one way or the other it'll it'll be fixed it's not a problem at all because then we'll have to definitely fold this back in are you guys talking about a secret and then it's going to come up to here okay when we scored this at five and three quarters that was in half See, so it doesn't matter what side. We're going to add adhesive to our half inch. And just set that up to the score line. And burnish. Sally's being mean and not telling. Well, we'll talk about that later when, when we're all done with our authentic project. So fold this one inwards and fold this one outwards. But this isn't very strong. Um, see, with it just being paper, and that's where we're going to add lightweight chipboard. So my light, lightweight chipboard, I cut it down to what my matting size would be. And it's three and three, three and five eighths by about five, because I don't want it bigger than what I'm going to cut my matting pieces. And it's going on the back side, not the front side. Oh, no, she doesn't. <laughs> then for the bottom, because you need it on that bottom especially, the lightweight chipboard is three, three and five eighths by three and three eighths. Three and five eighths, and I did mine by five. 
and we're going to just glue this straight down and then the matting for the inside will go on top. main thing is we get that lightweight chip cut yes you can use okay you can use a cereal box this is actually just the lightweight chipboard from the back of my paper pad this is the paper pad and i do have lightweight chipboard at country craft creations and it is the same lightweight chipboard that is on the back of the paper pads but your cereal box um any boxes like that now you could even use thicker chipboard but i would wrap it because sometimes the thicker will show this hides nice and flush underneath the cardstock that we're going to cover it with so all of this is the underside and if you accidentally put it on what you thought was the other side just bend your ends um, you don't have to um, stress over that it's good to use the recycled two from your cereal boxes now we do want to cover it so we want it to look nice and also i want to go ahead let me show you this meets here i want to go ahead and add lightweight chipboard to these pieces this one will be right here at the bottom i'll add this piece later again this is the same with three and five eighths but it's just a hair over three eighths, not quite five eighths because you want it to fit inside there. So just trim it a hair short of a half inch. And your matting sizes are going to be basically the same. The three and five eighths, two of them, well actually you need four of them by five so for the inside I'm going polka dot which is the back side of that darker paper and my bottom piece three and five eighths by three and three eighths and then I will cut a little strip which I did the same size as we just did our chipboard here, the three and five eighths by just a hair over three eighths. Was that Wilbur? Well, it sounds like Wilbur finally made his way downstairs, Tricia. I was a little concerned. He's been awful quiet. Whoops. And yeah, that's Wilbur.
and oh, there's my little strip. Well, Trisha, I don't know if that's good. I'm glad he came down, but I have a funny feeling because he's been so quiet. When I go upstairs, I'm sure I'll find out what he's been doing. Okay, that's a lot more sturdy. This is going to be a little bit flexible, which is fine. But I do want it to be more sturdy. Don't be afraid to push down. So now we want to do the same matting to the back. And I want to use the back side of my dots. So you do want to check your pattern placement to make sure if it is directional, it's going the right direction. Love it with the brown. It is dark. It looks very elegant with the brown when you're up close. So the back side, again, check your directional. So basically, they're going to be going um, opposite directions. Toilet paper. Oh, he better not be in toilet paper. He hasn't done that in a while. So let's not wish that back upon him, upon me. No, he's been carrying washcloths around. My little beagle, he carries washcloths. Oh, bye, Donna. Thanks for joining us. The bottom is the bottom. So it doesn't really matter the direction. Because it'll be sitting on the table. This would look gorgeous with green cardstock, too. Or a craft. You know, again, kind of masculine colors you want. And the bottom is just that little strip. Now, this piece does show. So, it's going to be somewhat directional. And, yeah, I can see eyes there. So, I do want the direction going the correct way. And the same here. I have one more piece of those. It's just a little bit over three eighths of an inch by three and five eighths. Cultivate would be a cute collection by Authentic to use for your kitchen. So now we're just going to bring this up and put this down together. And it does sit right on the crease. And I'll show you what I did to mine so that it, it stays up where I want it to. So we're just going to add our adhesive to this back side. And it comes right up to your score line. Basically, your score line will touch right there. And it's pretty thick. Now, along here, because this tends to want to be flat, I'm adding a line of art glitter glue, wet adhesive, and we're going to hold that up there. This is the part that takes just a second or two, because we do want to hold, we want to hold that right there where it folds. And art glitter glue dries fast. So I turned mine upside down. See, and it's pushing against it. We're going to let that dry for a minute. I added a strip. So I do want a coordinating color on here. And so that it blends in, I here's the piece. Remember, I said you need one and a quarter inch. One and a quarter pieces. I'm just going to cut... Um, a one inch strip and then we're going to cut them at five inch lengths. I don't want to disturb that. No, I did three quarters. So three quarters wide. And 
thousand. I actually went just a hair over five, just to the first sixteenth. If you have sixteenth markings, if not, just just go a hair over five. Let's ink those edges. This is one of those fun papers you can really ink up and look very um, retro, very vintage, very hunting. Okay. Do the back first. So, oh, maybe we'll go lighter. The back side of the plaid. The back side has all the uh, different hunting tools and there's some ducks. So I think I will go with the light. And it would be fun, too, if you have a die cut machine, you could cut out the recipient's name and put it on here. Actually, you can do this um, stripe first if you wanted before you hook this together. So go on the front, line those up. And then for a little decoration, back to these guys. And what a perfect, what a perfect image. Or you could even use a banner. But I am going with the little hunting dog here, bringing in the, ah, they're bringing in the duck. I mean, my husband used to hunt, my boys used to hunt, but that was back on the farm and when they ate it, you know. So, um, I'm not a hunter. <laughs> I don't hurt animals, but, I mean, I understand it. We have hunters out there, so this is definitely, especially, we have, and I've raised bird dogs. I raised them and sold them. I did not hunt them. They weren't for me. <laughs> Okay, now I take my clothes put it in. Oh, that's nice and sturdy. Again, you can really uh, add your decorations all you want. But there is perfect gift for him in an hour's time. So you can really pop, you can pop these out. Um, you could get a lot of these gifts made for him. And then he doesn't feel so left out. That's what's cool. I really, I really love this collection. I think it's going to be great. And again, for those male teachers, I, I know my one grandson has a male teacher, which I think is really cool. He had him in fourth grade. No, he had him in first grade, second, and they keep him with the same teachers and move the teachers up in this school. So I'm very happy with that. And I never thought to make of course, there really hasn't been a guy paper. So I think this is going to be a really great gift for him. I hope you guys enjoyed using hunting. And if you do or even use masquerade or the new or the magical Christmas that you show us over on Everything Authentic and uh, it's available. Make sure you get to your local scrapbook store, though, because it's not going to be around long. It's not reprinting. And what is out is what is out. So you're going to want to grab it quick. And if you can't find it at your local scrapbook stores, it's at countrycraftcreations.com. And I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of the week, guys. Weekend's almost here. See you next time.